Hello everyone, this is Marcela Bialczak, the undergraduate student from University of Connecticut. I'm majoring in marketing and today I have the pleasure and honor to talk with Kelly Kennedy from career development, um, I mean she's a career development instructor and coach from Office of Academic Advising. Thank you professor so much Thank for you. this interview, it's such a great pleasure to be in front of you. Thank you very uh, much. I just wanted to have this interview for not just me but like students that maybe want to know more about you. Students that have questions that maybe they didn't feel like asking, they were embarrassed, so that's like the whole purpose of the interview. Super. So let's start with like your background, where did you grow up? I grew up in central Massachusetts, just about 20 miles north of Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, how was Kelly as a kid and how did your personality change being a teenager in high school, college? Sure. Um, as a small child, I was very uh, organized, very uh, girly, if you would. I loved <laughs> dolls and Barbies. Um, I loved to dance. I mean, I took tap from uh, age three to age seventeen, all through high school. Really? <laughs> yeah. I went to private school, so I was um, my parents. I have a sister, a younger sister, um, and so the two of us were, if you would say, probably very sheltered. Um, my parents were very strict in terms of um, uh, friends and boys, and I couldn't date into a car until I was 16. <laughs> so I had, you know, parents that were very uh, involved in um, our lives and um, provided us with um, lovely uh, family life. I had friends, and um, I, you know, I was very much um, focused on um, being a leader. I, if I could describe it now. So when I was really little, I can recall even, you know, seven, eight, nine, I would uh, play school with um, <laughs> my friends, right? We had little desks and homework and all of this thing. And I had a little neighbor uh, next door mention, you know, she said, you know what, I don't think I want to play anymore because you give more homework than my <laughs> real teacher. <laughs> and I kept thinking, I really, really want to be a teacher. I had a, um, a first cousin, my father's first cousin, who was a teacher for over 45 years. Um, I spent a lot of time with um, Dee Dee and she was one who would teach me about being a teacher and crafts and um, I was very much into projects so uh, she would show me things like um, scissors that are called alligator scissors and they would cut like uh, for sewing mm -hmm. but I would use them for paper projects and pens and I loved things that had to do with um, crafts and the like and so she would teach me how to write thank you notes uh, and shop for nice things and so I think that because because of her influence, I was very focused on really enjoying school, but funny as it may be, I was probably more um, in tune with the social aspects of school more than I was the homework. <laughs> um, I was probably an average student, um, and that continued on through high school. Um, sad to say I wasn't really a wild child. I, I was very good to my parents. I probably uh, missed a curfew maybe once, twice with my boyfriend um, <laughs> in high school. Um, but my parents, you know, I think in this time frame, you have to remember it was uh, late 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things were a little different. You had a little more freedom. There was no iPhones, right? No, there was no <laughs> iPhones. They used to say, like in high school, they would say things like, um, uh, go keep yourself busy or, uh, you know, go out and come back when the street lights go on, which, you know, you would never do that today but I think that um, my parents were very much um, felt that my sister and I were both good girls if you would and really um, trusted us with a lot and um, we were very fortunate to have traveled a great deal my dad was um, uh, vice president of sales for foster grant sunglasses mm -hmm. and um, he did a lot of traveling and at that time, he took it upon himself to uh, bring his family aboard any time he could. So we would go places where there were ski goggles and when there were sunglasses. So we would take trips to Canada for skiing, and then we went to Bermuda and Hawaii and Florida and so many different places. I think my first um, time alone on a plane was at age 12. So that independence really shaped me. 
um, not only for adventure for life, but also sort of having a feeling about gathering information and really feeling good about being, being open-minded. Right? Yeah, being open-minded, understanding other cultures, understanding other people. I think uh, being very independent. I was always very independent. If you ask my mom, she would say that I was always in charge, <laughs> right? She was, you know, she would say, oh yes, Kelly was in charge, you know. Um, but I love to dance. Um, so I had a little bit of a creative nature. Um, my sister was a little bit more um, sports oriented. She was more a little bit more tomboyish. She had like baseball and softball and she would play field hockey. Um, my dad was a triple A baseball player in his, in his youth. Mm -hmm. And um, it didn't turn out for him because uh, his dad was in the war and he had to come back to support his mother. And uh, he, uh, I think that athletic ability has uh, transferred to my sister and not to myself. So I think I was a little bit more in the sort of uh, decorative areas, craft areas, and she was more in the sports area. So mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, I, I evolved over into college probably a little bit more, I think. I went to Regis College for a year and a half, and, uh, which was an all-women's college in Boston. Um, don't kid yourself. It was a wild place. <laughs> Those women. I was just don't kid yourself you about that. <laughs> don't kid yourself. That was it. People go, oh, how lovely, and I go, no, they were wacko. So you know, I mean, I think they were. You know, the girls were wild. So it, it, needless to say, it was a sort of an education in itself to see how free you could possibly be in your freshman year of college, and we had a great time. Um, lots of laughs. Really great gals. So you didn't miss guys. <laughs> no, you didn't. To be honest with you, you really didn't because we were very much like going to Boston and we would mm -hmm. take the train. I mean, we felt like we were, you know, uh, a million bucks because we um, could do whatever we wanted to do. You know, we, we felt like we were very contained at Regis. It was in a beautiful suburb of Boston. So I feel like that was almost my prep school, if you would, because I, mm -hmm. I was 17 when I graduated from high school just because of the time frame. And I, I really did feel that I was young in a sense that um, even though I had had traveling and my parents had culturally you know, brought us to things, I still felt um, because I was the oldest child that I still wasn't aware of what was out there. I think a lot of my friends were very, very high achievers. Um, I have a friend uh, who never got a C in her whole life and got accepted to every college that she ever could imagine, whereas my college experiences were really shaped by, um, I had a guidance counselor who happened to be a nun, and she said to me, are you sure college is for you? She sort of really put me on the spot. And I think that the that moment is very pivotal for me because at that moment in time, I was determined to say, yes, it is for me. Mm -hmm. I was determined to make sure that not only was that wrong for her to say that to me, that I was going to prove her otherwise. Okay, And I think that um, that passion and that determination led me all the way through my college experience um, and wanting to be a teacher in, in sociology where it's my major. Um, I did at that time choose uh, kindergarten through eighth grade as the teaching um, possibilities. But as I went through my college years, uh, I transferred into Merrimack College, which is an Augustinian uh, private mm -hmm. institution. It's the sister school to Villanova. Mm -hmm. Um, ironically, it is my 25th reunion coming up, so it's very shocking. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's very shocking. I was just talking to them last night, remembering all these things. It was really fun. But I was very involved. I, I began to realize a couple of different things. One is that, um, you know, maybe my parents were very good about certain things, about bringing my attention, but my dad had only gone to two years of business school, so I wasn't as knowledgeable of college and the resources that were available to me, whereas some of my other friends did. And I think that I made almost a personal mission um, at that time, and being involved with uh, the campus of Merrimack College, and because I was only there for three years, you know, I was only there for a short amount of time, that I wanted to make my time count. So those two things, combination, the heartfelt, and the time being there, I joined student council, I was a class agent, I was on class council, I, uh, re I won the 1990 award for personnel award at, U at um, Merrimack. I 
took it upon myself to make every moment count. And what I did was I became so involved with college admissions that it began to realize some of the administrators were very influential in helping me and seeing that I was really gearing myself more toward higher education than I was elementary education. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I had a wonderful experience in my student teaching. As a teacher, you do your student teaching your last semester, which is kind of odd, but you do your student <laughs> teaching. And they, because my last name, my maiden name is a W, by the time they got to my name, they ran out of public schools. So they actually had to send me to the school down the street that was St. Augustine's, and mm -hmm. it was a, a private, uh, you know, and the students would um, come in in the morning and um, say, good morning and God bless you. I mm -hmm. mean, they were like the sweetest little things you ever want to meet in your own life. And I had a wonderful experience, but I thought to myself, hmm, I really think I have to go out into the world and I have more to give. I have more to give. I felt like in this classroom, I needed to go out in the world and then maybe come back and maybe someday when I'm retired, I will be able to be in a fourth grade classroom and I will have all of these experiences that I talked about, you know, that I'm doing now and then share it with them versus the opposite versus going in as an elementary school teacher, which most of my friends were doing. So I think that at that point it was very pivotal. I had a couple of admissions, Dean of Admissions at Merrimack, the Vice President of Student Services at, at Merrimack, um, who are now president, college presidents everywhere. Very pivotal for me um, in terms of setting the tone for what direction my career was going to go in.